Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? This is a Patreon commentary, this time for Peter. And it's for Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth. Sorry it took a while to get to this. I apologize. Doing the best I can to get these videos out for you guys. And again, sorry that I'm sort of leaning back so I don't wreck my back out. But let's get into it. Three, two, one, pressing play. So we got Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. Now, of horror franchises, I would say Hellraiser films are not really the films I grew up watching the most. It would be more Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. Then maybe like Chainsaw Master and stuff. But I like the first two Hellraiser films. I've reviewed all the Hellraiser films for those interested. I have a review of every Hellraiser film on the channel as well as Elm Street, Friday the 13th, and Chainsaw Master, other horror franchises. Again, feel free to go to the channel, click on the magnifying glass uh, over here by the About section on the channel. Just type in the name of the movie. Or go up there, type in Rambo R for Life and the title of the movie, you'll find it. So, yeah. I reviewed Hellraiser 1, 2, 3, and 11, and how many more there were. I liked the first three, four, eh, fifth, eh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I hated the rest. <laughs> Pretty much four and five I wasn't really a big fan of, and then anything after that I hated. But I liked the first three. My favorite's part two. If you want to know why, feel free to watch the reviews. Uh, I believe I've done commentaries on the first two. Of course, we have a great score. Enjoy this musical score. Original story by Peter Atkins and Tony Randall, based on characters by Clive Barker, written by Peter Atkins. But this time, uh, directed by Anthony Hickox. Anthony Hickox, director of Waxwork, Full Eclipse. Pretty damn decent director. I've liked quite a few of Anthony Hickox's movies, including this one. <clears throat> I know when this came out, it didn't get a lot of good word of mouth. But I think in retrospect, people are like, well, if you think this is bad, go watch Hellraiser Revelations. Go watch Hellraiser Deader or Hellraiser Judgment, all the other shit. Like this one, I like that it was really the only time we've seen Pinhead truly unleashed. Which, I mean, within the story is kind of interesting because in Hellraiser 2, you think Pinhead is dead. Uh, he was in hell, so how can he really die? But really, you find out the soul of Pinhead has been split. So you have the human form, which our lead character will find later, the military man, played by Doug Bradley. And then this Pinhead is more just full-on evil. So even more sadistic. And of all the Hellraiser films, this is probably the film he gets the most screen time. Which even makes it a bit interesting. This one guy thinks he's too cool for school. Seems like someone to be in a 50s movie with James Dean. So I guess this is supposed to be kind of the pillar from the end of the second movie, but. That second movie had a lot more to it than this for the pillar. What is your pleasure, sir? So I guess this is supposed to be the bum in the first two. Which, I guess he's a demon because he flew away at the end of the first movie. At the end of the first movie, he flew away, and then 
the second movie, for some reason, he was in the pillar. I don't know why. I didn't want to be Grizzly Adams here. <clears throat> now, I don't mind this actress who plays the lead reporter. I thought she did fine. A lot of people didn't like her. She's definitely not as good as... Kirsty Ashley Lawrence want to be Hulk Hogan here if Hulk Hogan had no muscles that's a cameraman here Hulk Hogan's dad let me tell you something brother sister brother it's a mystery sister brother brother sister There's something weird about this nurse brother, sister, brother, 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 sister, brother. Weird ass old school cell phone. I do think this film would have been better though. Like again, I think this lady did a good job. But I wish Ashley Lawrence had really stayed with the series because she could have had this role. She would have grown up to be a reporter. And then she's in the midst of this battle again. At the wrong place at the wrong time. Like, John Mc like a horror version of John McClane. At the wrong place at the wrong time. And then that would have been even more fulfilling at the second half of the film when she meets the human, you know, Dud Bradley, the, the soldier. Because there'd be a certain history there. And her battling the full-on pinhead. To give her a little bit more physical stuff to do, too. Shooting that pinhead with guns. Even if it doesn't do anything, just to slow him down and get some visceralness to it. But <clears throat> that was a pretty well directed scene. I, I liked the way that was edited, where it definitely felt a bit of visceral intensity to it with the up close of the chains and the blood and one of them hits her ankle and then some of the push-ins they went into her, her face yeah i think hiccups brought a sense of energy to that scene i liked that what is the boiler room where is the boiler room fucking kruger it's where freddy kruger Oh shit. It starts out with a bang. Look at this shit with the fucking chains and shit. Um, this is when you leave the room. Leave, bitch. Leave. You blew his top. <laughs> fucking Stanner style. Blew his top. God damn. That's the way to open the movie. We're like ten min eight minutes in. Got a fucking head explosion. Those chains don't fuck around. Maybe that's the thing people have a problem with this one is that the first two or I don't want to say I don't want to say they're more artistic, but this one seems a bit more straightforward. I don't know how to put it, but yeah, I thought Anthony Hitchcock did a good job. It wasn't a carbon copy of the first two. He brought a little American modern feel to it. And so the Twin Towers there.
And I do wish Ashley Lawrence was the lead here. Just for the continuity sake. And then, but then she comes back for that fucking, what the hell, debtor? No, not debtor. Hellseeker? In a nothing role. Like, why do you come back for that one? I'm, I'm assuming she said no. I'm assuming they offered it to her. She said no. She doesn't want to do this stuff anymore. Which I don't know why. I would do as many as possible. Because not only Ashley Lawrence. What other movies has she really done? If you think about it. Other than Hellraiser 1 and 2. Don't even remember anything else she's done. Weird club, all this weird shit around. Fucking like artwork of mannequins with barbed wire in the ceilings. <laughs> Fuck to you, the Lord of Illusions. That cup's on fire, I'm gonna piss in it unless you get out of my face. Fuck yeah, girls dancing, take your top off, that'd be better. Dance on the fucking table. That reminds me, this is the, the movie that has the Hellraiser da -da -na 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 -na, by Lemmy. Hellraiser. I don't know if that's in the end credits or what, but Hellraiser. I think people can play about the soundtrack too. Probably the people that hate Elm Street 4 because it's more rock and roll version of Freddy. I'm fine with that. Perfectly fine with that. It's not repeating itself, but I think it's still entertaining. It's good music. Better than this shit with the fucking violins. Classical music. The fuck? It's classical. Oh, it's the same club. It's classical music, but then in the background you have people fucking dancing <laughs> by Silhouette. So he has this club, but he also has this prim and proper classical dinner scene in the back. Ooh, got him. I'm not your type. I'm out of gray school. Ooh, shit. You better watch out for those candles. They're going to burn the place down. It's a fire code. What should we were? We were soldiers now? We're going to Vietnam. Goddamn Hammerdry Hill here now. It's fucking Charlie on you six. Go, go, go. Where's Chuck Norris? It's missing action, man. And for some reason, there's a baby trying. Well, there's a baby in the fucking fields. I think this is about her dad. <laughs> My dad is still alive. He's still alive. I mean, I did say I think she's a She's not great in this. But yeah, I think a stronger... That would have been interesting if it was like a... Before they were stars, like a young Sandra Bullock or something like that. That would have been interesting. I just keep saying if the same part was Ashley Lawrence. But I guess with Ashley Lawrence, you wouldn't have the her father being in the Vietnam, so... Maybe it wasn't her choice. Maybe it was a story choice. They're like, nah, we're not going to use her again. Maybe, I don't know.
What is this? Menopause. That's what it is. I drink your cup and shut up and stop asking me you fucking questions. Your goddamn glitter dome outfit to the glitter dome. I don't know, I look at your outfit. I don't know what, they just made me think of this random movie that I've never seen, but I remember the trailer as like John Lithgow and what was it? Uh, James Garner? I've never seen it. Some cop movie called The Glitter Dome. One day I got to see that because that was a trailer that was on one of the Ramble VHS tapes I had. The Glitter Dome. I should go write that down so I don't forget. <laughs> I'm sorry about the commentaries. They're not the most exciting because a lot of times it's just hard for me to think of what to to say. Fucking bugs everywhere. It's hard for me to, to sit, think of like what to talk about. Stupid bugs. I tell you. I tell you. Get away. I hate doing that. I feel bad when I do that. But at the same time, I mean, I'm one of those guys. I hate. I feel bad killing a bug, but I, I fucking do it anyway. Because, like, I don't want them crawling on me when I'm sleeping. If that makes sense. I'm one of those guys that sometimes tries to pick up a bug and put it outside. And then other times it's like, I can't get to it. Right, the bugs don't give a fuck about me, so. But still. I know that's stupid, but. I was going to show her the box. Not that kind of box. It came out of your pussy? No, it came out of the Lament Configuration. Pretty cool looking box. I know this has been talks of a Hellraiser remake. We don't need any remakes of Hellraiser. It's done. It's finished. It's finito. It's been done for a while. It's been done for years. You don't need a remake of Hellraiser. They've already made 10 or so movies. And even by then, they've run out of ideas. They've run out of ideas by part four, so they had to put in a fucking space. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing more you can do with Hellraiser. I'm sorry. I'm sure there's a lot of other fucking Clive Barker stories you could deal with instead of just Hellraiser. Fuck, if you want to make a sequel or well, make a Lord of Illusions 2 with Scott Bakula. Bring Scott Bakula back. Let me see more of his fucking character. Because I reviewed Lord of Illusions recently. That's a fun movie. Don't stick your hand in a fucking pillar. There's holes in those statues. <laughs> Big old fucking rat. <laughs> we cats um, cat rats like we. His blood got on the statue, the pillar, and now it's hungry, and he's to feed. He needs to feed. That sounds like a song. The blood that needs to feed. I 
fuck are you trying to be? Tiana Reeves with your whoa. Clean your fucking kitchen up. Don't have fucking AIDS and all sorts of bullshit around everywhere. You're making breakfast, but you're doing a shitty job of it. Yeah, that's probably the only thing you're virgin on, lady. Kitchen virgin. The only fucking virgin thing you know. The fucking places don't go on fire enough fucking smoke. Smoke alarm. I guess you don't have smoke alarms, otherwise it would have fucking been ringing out. Yeah, that's awkward. Pretty much we're getting more interactions of our reporter character and this lady who knew the guy whose head blew up. And she's trying to make breakfast for the reporter for being nice. Where shit in there's a hot topic or what's the other fucking store I'm thinking of? Not hot topic. There's another store. Maybe someone will see. It's the fucking weird store where you have like the weird shit in there. You have whoopee cushions, all sorts of other stuff in there. I can't remember what the fuck the store's called. Spencer, Spencer Goods or something. I can't fucking remember. Fucking bug. Fuck is that, Robert England? No, not really. God, you're choking that little dog on that leash. Yeah, there's nothing wrong in breaking into someone's fucking business. I don't see what could go wrong here. Okay, so there's an art gallery they broke into. Fuck you giving files to her. What do you think she's going to find? Oh, the Chenard Institute from the second movie. <coughs> well, at least they try to put at least a little bit of consistency from the second film. There was a pillar at the end of the second film, and this begins with a pillar. And they mentioned Chenard. So, I, again, at least they're attempting to bridge this with the first two films, at least somewhat. I'm sorry, this kind of club, I don't think people should be wearing fucking bow ties. Fuck, you need bow ties at a club like this. It's already to fuck and drink and women with their titties ready to shoot out. 
So I'm sure some of the workers wear bow ties. This guy's hair is ready to fall right into his eyes. This guy is like a wannabe Kevin Dillon. I was trying to think of like who he reminds me of. Kind of like a lesser Kevin Dillon. If Kevin, if Kevin, Dillon, Kevin Dillon had that hair, yeah, I could see that. All right, Anthony Hickox brought his sex scene in here. Cool. And you know it's a kinky sex scene because he's smoking a cigarette while doing it. At least put the blades on your shoulders. Move your hands, they're in the way of the tits. Some nice shock compositions like that, where you see the pillar in the background and the guy's face in the foreground. So Penn has eyes open when the guy comes. <laughs> Okay. We got a picture of Ashley Lawrence. And there's Dead Bradley in his military outfit. Michael, uh, Michael Myers now gonna come in this bitch. There was some rumor, I don't know how much truth there is, that John Carper and Clive Barker wanted to do a Michael versus Penhead movie. Somehow I don't believe that. <laughs> but I would see it. I would fucking see it. Maybe John Carper's like, hey, I'd get a chance to work with Clive Barker, sure. If they were involved with it, I would like to see that. But yeah, it's too late for that. Be better than fucking Halloween 2018, I know that. No, don't do any more breakfast. Don't do lunch, don't do dinner, don't even do the dishes. Just do yourself on the bed, face up or down, don't matter. Do lady, lady healing one of you for the sex and fucking, come on. What do you expect, lady? What do you expect, lady? You know, I mean, I guess she's supposed to be the dumb blonde. Should have just left when you had the chance, lady. Damn, chain right. Ooh. Stender. 
God damn. Fuck, extend her all in one go and. <laughs> Fucking hell. I forgot they took her skin off all in one go. That was some pretty good practical effects of the skin lady. Now there's Pinhead. He's got the pens because he's a prick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Not quite. I think one of the things people complain about is they thought Doug Bradley's pinhead talked too much in this movie. I mean, I would understand that to a point where his powers seem more powerful words in the first two movies. Like, I'll tear your soul apart. <laughs> but actually like I like seeing Deb Bradley get to say more and do more as Pinhead yeah it gave a little bit of different feel to it because I like to hear Freddy talk a bit more in Elm Street 4 than Elm Street 3 I prefer this than the fucking wannabe cameos and Hellraiser 5 through whatever. Shit, there ain't no fucking place. He's a lying motherfucker. Don't trust him. Pin has look at him. Of course, he's a liar. That's what I find funny in movies. Is like you'll believe that. Yep, they kill, they murder, they rape, destroy, but they lie. It's it's like they're so surprised that a bad guy like that will lie, even though they murder and kill. <laughs> I didn't like they murder and kill, but then they just surprised that they lied. If I would kill him and murder him and rape him, I don't think they mind lying. <laughs> so I just one of those funny things. But yeah, he must be telling the truth. Hey, Hulk Hogan's Hulk Hogan dad again. I need to talk to you later. My son's doing a movie. He's some type of commando in space. He's going to co-star with Doc Brown. We don't see you. This is in the 90s. It's a VHS or a beta tape. Look at that big fucking cassette tape. Oh, this is Ashley Lawrence. So she wants to come back for this. Premature just to be exposition.
I believe this was supposed to take place around Hellraiser 2, I guess. These tapes. It just said that you got Ashley Lawrence, but only for this videotape footage to just shout, not shout, but just showcase the exposition. The box, you do, you move it, there's demons from it. I, yeah, I kind of want to know the whole story, why... But I thought this stuff was interesting, like the the Dud Bradley is, you know, the human former Dud Bradley, and showcasing that more. That interesting bit of the story. <clears throat> Two balls. Is that supposed to represent something? What was that? Oh, is a toy or a dead dog or something? <laughs> Yeah, it was a toy. Toy for who though? I don't didn't see any fucking kids or animals here, so the fuck was that toy for? That was a dog, it looked dead. If that was a toy, I don't know who the toy's for. Ah, some that box looks ugly. So for some reason that lemon configuration looks fucking ugly. It looks orange. Looks like made of wood or something. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know that. Why does that box look so ugly in this one? Maybe it's just me. It looked cooler in the first two. That's definitely one of those things in the background when she passed by. They just put a little sliding thing that make it seem as if there's other buildings out there. Why the fuck are you playing around with it? You're the girl that was with the guy with the chains. And then you sh you're the one that showed the reporter lady the, the picture. So why are you even fucking around with it? It's a bad call, Ripley. It's a bad call. Don't do it. It's alright. She was saved by the bell. Well, the phone rang. Joy Janella? No. Is it? <clears throat> Fuck, he is naked on the motorcycle? No. He got his shirt open as if he's fucking... Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park. The theory of Pirates of the Caribbean, the pirates don't eat the tourists. Don't fall for this lady. Well, it's not like I don't say anything. It's going to change the movie. You don't know, listen to this prick, really? I just can't do it, Captain. I don't have the power. Just, hand, just disconnect the phone. God, the place is a fucking mess. 
What the hell? Why is the place a fucking mess? She must have gone ape shit. Wooly's gone ape shit. Fuck does say. Really, she got butt hurt about that. Fuck. Maybe she could have taken you with her, dumb bitch. Don't you think about that? Hey, you can come with me? Fucking idiot. He looks like one of those greasers that are being sometimes they come back. Ready to get Tim Matheson. Part of Robert Russell's gain or something. Interesting thing about Anthony Hitchcock with this, he definitely more willing to move the camera. Whether it be like little push-ins or little turns here and there, things of that nature. Which do I, I can understand, keeps a little bit of the spontaneity up. God, you're an idiot, lady. Why'd you go there in the fucking first place? Now we're about to casualties of war. I think the one guy firing the weapon is Anthony Hitchcock, the director himself. So now we're not in Vietnam, we're in a much older war. I mean, at least they're showing a little bit of background on Dud Bradley's character as a human. You know, this war that he was in, stuff like that. Wow, oh, fucking bodies flying everywhere. Okay, no one streams out of bed like that. No one's like, ah. ah. Try doing that. <laughs> You'll do a workout on your abs. Help with what? You're not... Why don't you tell her? Help you with what? Spit it out. What is it up with a lot of these people that just... You have to help me. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you right now what you have to help me with. But you have to help me. But again, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Because the movie's not uh, there yet. Then fucking tell... Why didn't you fucking tell her from the TV of land? God damn. <laughs> This girl being an idiot. But he's got the evil eyes. I think you should get the fuck out of here. He literally has evil eyes. And that come to daddy, I'm guessing that's reference to the first movie. Where Andrew Robinson said that. Come to daddy. Fucking idiot.
Why don't you use your fucking chains? You got these fucking chains. Why don't you use them? You used it on the other lady. You can just use the fucking chains. Yeah, man, a Hellraiser movie. I guess this is similar to the first two, where uh, the first half is your main villain being fed victims to, yeah, they're stupor. <laughs> I mean, one had to get his skin back, Frank, Uncle Frank, then Lady did in the second film. Now it's for Penny, yeah, this fucking pillar thing. So I'm just listening to Dead Briley. <laughs> Which I know he's not doing Pinhead anymore. He didn't for the last two movies. Which I can't blame him. I mean, in those movies, the last five, six he did, he was barely in them. Barely in them. And... You gotta put all that fucking makeup on and the stuff with the nails and all that shit just to say like five lines of dialogue. And there's such lower budgeted movies, each one lower and lower, so he's not going to get paid that much. So yeah, it'd be like, what the fuck's the point? <laughs> oh, wanna be Tim and Dylan? No. Ooh, that's some nice effects. Got some Roz jam right in his fucking head. <laughs> Was that sloth from the Goonies? <laughs> uh, one of the faces on the pillow looked like sloth from the Goonies. You fucked up, lady. You released Pinhead. Because you're fucking stupid. You're coming out of the goddamn cocoon. Pinhead is back and he is pissed. Fuck is that blinking light shit? Not a bad place she has. Those old school TVs, those fat ass TVs. You know, now everything's like a flat screen, but this is back when you had those fat ass booty TVs. TVs that had the booty. Some fucking lights blinking down there. Some of the aliens don't come down now. Close Encounters the third time. It's an old school radio because of Dud Bradley's character. Then just fucking tell her what to do. Straight up. It's like some of these movies you have uh, people like Yoda. All these people. They talk in all these fucking riddles. Just fucking say it. Outright to the point. Stop lolly dadding around and shit. 
God damn. Get to the goddamn point, Ed. Just have her listen to live old school music. I don't know for what purpose, but. Like, why did she have to tune to the right frequency that yet Dev Bradley to talk to her? What if she didn't do that? Then she wouldn't get this info. Dude, what's with all the goddamn games? Just tell her what the fucking everything. Write a fucking note. I don't give a fuck. Leave a voice on her answering machine. A recording. Write a book. I don't care. They will all be more efficient than this. So it's going to show her how he got into the box. Again, not that kind of box. Now this, with the hiccups, it definitely reminds me of Wax where going through the portals. One of those, it, it would glow blue. It doesn't here. No matter where you go, there you are. Watch for two the lost in time, no matter where you go, there you are. <clears throat> Which I think we'll see this setting at the end of the film as well. Yeah, that line really is great. I just walked into madness with you. No talk. Yeah. The more I see this, the more she is one of the weaker parts of the movie. I, I don't hate her. I don't. I mean, I don't mind how she looks to be superficial. I've seen much worse acting, Sally. She has moments where she's fine, and then there's moments where she's off. I, I I do think there are better actresses, or I didn't just get for the Ashley Lawrence to do it. <coughs> wait, wait, wait for the sky to fall. There's all these dead bodies staging up the place. Holy shit. They ripped apart, waiting for bodies to fall. All of these guys are dead. They're deader than shit. We need some Febreze. We need the whole shit load of a Febreze. Does this dead body swamp and fucking stings to heaven? But maybe that's what you want. Do, 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 do. Okay. Elliot Spencer. Captain Elliot Spencer. So that was Pinhead. But it was interesting to see, I mean, Hell on Earth made sense in the subtitle of this, where what if Pinhead actually went to Earth, you know, like, to try to put Hell on Earth and really, you know, kick some ass. <laughs> I thought that was an interesting direction for a Hellraiser sequel. Probably takes a little bit to get going. I mean, we're like 55 minutes in. But maybe because of the lower budget, they can't go. This is stuff at the beginning of Hellraiser 2, this scene. 
Yeah, Hellbound Hellraiser 2. We saw this at the beginning of that movie. All this stuff. His creation into Pinhead. monster as I was I was still bound by laws hell has his own commandments too which is I mean that's an interesting idea I like that Yeah, there's the pillar at the Yeah, the pillar from the second movie. What I was is out there in your world, unbound. Unstoppable. That sounds like a trailer narration. Which would have been, that's the one thing about, what was it, Hellraiser Judgment that would have been interesting? Spoiler for who hasn't seen that or seen my review of that. Because I even said that in the review of Hellraiser, yeah, I think it's called Judgment. It would have been interesting to see Dead Bradley play the role to the just for the fact of by the end of that film, Penhead is like, he's like turned into a human and like cast to Earth as a human. Which I'm like, okay, that's an interesting idea. <laughs> very persuasive and very inventive. As I need to trick your sorry ass. You got more of the headbanger's ball here. That Lemmy song must be at the end credits. Because I haven't heard it yet. Oh, yeah, I think this is where he's going to have fun with this uh, club. He's making these ornaments move. Yeah, this is where he's definitely going to have the body count. That's interesting, making the art pieces move like that. Now this shit's about ready to hit the fan. <laughs> it's kind of like, well, Hellra Pinhead didn't really get to do anything at the end of Hellraiser 2. So it's like, you know what, let's fix that. And let's have him go to town on this. So you think Chenard went to town on his patience? No, Pinhead's like, hold my beer. Look at that, ripping fucking fingers off there. Impaling people. I think one of them, he just impaled was Zach Gallagher from Waxwork. Big ol' ice stole into a girl's mouth. <laughs> Wrapping barbed wire. God, ripping fucking pieces of face off. <laughs> Fucking CD man here. <laughs> hey, the head guys just said, fuck it. We're going to have chaos. Let's have chaos here. Let the buys hit the floor. God damn. 
Pethead in this just don't give a fuck. He just went to town. Just all the... By the pool of blood on that door. He just don't give a fuck. He don't give a shit. God damn, man. God damn. Yeah, he don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's a, it's a goddamn catastrophe. It's a fucking catastrophe. You're right about that. Yeah, we try to report the store and then leave us the fuck alone. It's like, it looks like a body from here. We don't know jack shit about this. Dot, it's Joey. You need to call your son, Hulk Hogan. We need his help. Oh, there you go. There's a bit of Watchword 2 Lost in Time on, um, what was it, Channel 12? Yep, that's Watchword 2 Lost in Time. Yeah, Anthony Hickox. <laughs> I love the, the first two Watchword films. Those are films I watched over and over and over again. I was so happy when they got a Blu-ray release. I wish Watchers wanting to would get a Blu-ray, but yeah, I love that Watchers wanting to get a Blu-ray and features and commentaries. Like that was the job well done on that. Because again, those are films I've watched over and over again. I would say I liked even Watchers two even more than the first one, but the first one's good. But yeah, the second one I fucking love. With the Bruce Campbell segment, that's like the haunting and black and white, and references to Godzilla and. Seven that's reminiscent of Alien. Love Watchword 2 Lost in Time. Huge fan of that. Dun, 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 dun. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, your buddy is dead. He's dawned me, pal. He's up shit fucking creek. But yeah, I think one of the people who died in that party was that Galadian because he's became friends with Anthony Hickox. And they're still good friends to this day. I mean, they both did the commenters for Watchwick 1 and 2. Damn, dead bodies there. So what happened? The police didn't see all this shit either? I mean, I guess they're... Yeah, the police didn't see all this shit? <laughs> there would be fucking police there cleaning this shit up. They wouldn't just leave them there. Get the meat wagon. But yeah, there's a hell of a body count for Pinhead. Definitely the biggest body count for Pinhead in any of the fucking Hellraiser. He probably kills more people in this movie than all the Hellraiser films combined. Because <laughs> he doesn't really kill anyone, I guess, except Uncle Frank in the first movie. Like, no one in the second one. Because, you know, Pinhead is not really that n known for that kind of... Maybe that's why people thought, well, you know, Pinhead's not really known for that. He's not a Freddy Krueger. He's not a Jason Voorhees. They try to make him a bit more like that in this, which I was fine with. So I put <laughs> balls from a plain pool in some guy's mouth. Fucking hell. That's one hell of a party. It's a party. It's a party hearty. Look at all the fucking freaks. 
People had some fun today. A shitload of fun. Fun, fun, more fucking fun. <laughs> Holy shit. Get the fuck out of there. God damn it. I can't see shit. Holy shit, balls of fire. Welcome to hell, uh, lady. You get the fuck out of there. God damn, I'm, how many fucking dead bodies are there? Shit. Deal with the candles. It's a fucking fire code. But it dead buys everywhere. There's your buddy. <laughs> it's a video camera for a head and the head's in the lap. Hiding his boner. I mean, the the lead lays being a weepy McWeeperton, but at the same time, with all these dead bodies, can I really blame her that much? <laughs> yeah, I, she's not really pulling the tough at 100% believable. Turn up the volume? You mean like this? But again, if you had Ashley Lawrence as a star and then be like, this is the culmination of her versus Pinhead, I'm sure the dialogue would have been different because there'd be a history between the two. And then that big old battle between the two at the end. I think that would have been cool. I keep harping on that because I think that's the biggest misstep for this. I like this film for it trying to be different and it seems like that club master scene, Anthony Hickox's direction. Deb Bradley have a bit more screen time compared to the others. That was cool to see. And in this sequence, you're going to get at least a little bit of spectacle. I mean, it's that much for a, for a low budget. Hey, you got, we have a street corner. You know, we got at least something happening. We got power tables trying to electrocute her. We got then trying to fry her ass. You can run faster than that, lady. Come on. This ain't like fucking little jogger in the park. This is you running for your life. You can run faster than that. Stop looking back. God damn it. This is a random explosion. What the fuck is Tokar and Razor going to come out now? But I mean, they had a little bit of spectacle, like uh, explosions. Almost killed by ma manhole cover. Fucking Ninja Turtles going to come out and kill her now. But yeah, I'm a sucker for this. This is fun. I mean, just spectacle, explosions. Manhole covers <laughs> try to cut her head off. Why does it feel like somebody's watching me? I actually like these cinnabites. People hate them, but I think it's cool. Like the video camera one, I think it looks cool. And then the video camera like, it just blows up the whole store of TVs. <laughs> God 
Ah, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Put a hole right through that guy's head. Hulk Hogan is dead. No, you're a Cenobite. What the fuck? Is there a... It's a CD man? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool, the CD man. I, I like that Cinnabite. A lot of people hate that, but I think it's a cool design. Shooting CDs reminds me of I Come in Peace. Now remember, they did say that she has to give it to him. So I guess that's why they can't kill her. I'm guessing. Maybe they can't kill her. They're just sucking ass at it. I got flamethrower centibite. Yeah, stop looking at them and run. Get in a fucking car and get the fuck out of there. But yeah, I like that there's a bit of spectacle and fun and, and action. You got explosions, you got some cool Cenobites, you got some body count, you got some fun gore. Yeah, I think this is a fun movie. A little bit of a spectacle. Yeah. CD like right there, guy's face. At least the cops are hitting them. They're not shitty shots. Okay, run. You know it's gasoline. Don't just stand there. <laughs> the lead terror just hightailed it out of there. It's like, fuck you, cops. Yeah. I mean, you could like push them. Grab them, but no, she's like, fuck this, I'm out of here. Church scene, I remember this. <clears throat> the fuck did you trip on when you enter the church? This priest looks like he's, got, he's walking like he's got shit in his pants. Dude, you have no idea what you're talking about. And again, her line delivery is not the greatest. Then what the fuck is that? I mean, I come on. There had to. I mean, come on now, man. Sally, she is one of the weaker parts of this movie. I have to say. And watching this again. Fucking burn the priest's hand. <laughs> and then him mocking the, the Jesus thing. Yeah. Interesting the fat take out the nail and there's like a little fucking maggot that comes out too. You know what? Honestly, this is going to be controversial. If you had Ashley Lawrence as a lead doing all this, and you know, you rework some of the dialogue to show their history, 
I think this would be better than the first movie. I really do. I really do believe that. I like the first movie. I think this would be better than the first movie if you had Ashley Lawrence as the lead. But hey, I'm a sucker for this stuff. <laughs> what the hell is he going to do with this? the fuck are you doing lady oh, I make him feed Ew. come and get this you motherfucker and people are like well why does Pinhead get so mad and angry he didn't do that in the first two this is not the pinhead from the first two. This is a different pinhead. They explain in the story that the two souls is split where this is pinhead without any human bond with it, any human part. So is that going to be the just the calm demeanor? Because the human Doug Bradley spirit is out of it. And that's part of it. Oh, that's her friend as a Cenobite. <clears throat> well, get the fuck out of there. Don't stand there. Don't just stand there with a thumb up your ass. What are you doing? Why are you just standing there like a dumb ass? Why didn't you fucking run for it or something? Um, if you don't do something, you better do it quick. They're all converging on you because you didn't run and now you're just sitting there like a fucking dumbass. I don't think that's going to do anything. Dumbass. What's going on now? I'm trying to remember. Okay, now it's shooting all these fucking lasers. Okay, I guess now it's just automatically doing all this. She didn't even do anything. It fucking sold itself. What the fuck? Dude, it just solved itself. What the hell? She barely did any. Oh yeah, I remember now. It's been a while since I've seen this. This is a part of the trick. That's right. This is part of the trick to make you think it's over and then because he did say she has to give it. Completely, yeah, that's right. I haven't seen this in a while. I haven't seen this probably since I reviewed it, which was a long time ago. But again, I know I said this before, but if you want to see my reviews 
they're all on this channel of all the Hellraiser films from this first one all the way to Hellraiser what Judgment yeah that was all a fake a ruse because of this fake out that's going to be coming up of course he knows her so going to use her dad but she's being stupid why would you think your dad's spirit wants the fucking box But it is a smart ruse from Pinhead, I gotta admit, it's a smart plan. It is a smart plan, if she has to give it. Make it seem as if she's in deep shit and deep trouble. Look at all these people I have. I really don't give a fuck about these other Cinnabites, because they weren't my actual brethren from the first two. So, oh, whoops, they're gone. And I guess I'm gone, quote, hint, hint. Oh, now you gave it to me. Ha ha, you stupid bitch. Because you fucked up. You, f you fucked up royally. You cue the ECW chance. You fucked up. You fucked up, Joey. You fucked up. You fucked up. You can't. He's a fucking demon. You th why did? Why do you think he gives a shit about fair? There ain't no crying in Hellraiser. She trips again. Jesus. God. This, yeah. The more I watch this, the more the lead is just weak, man. The weakest part of this movie is the lead. I gotta admit. Weakest part is the lead. <coughs> See, now we're back here again. <laughs> We're going to hell. Ladies first. Do I search for Dad Br the the human captain of Dud Bradley because he's a free spirit, but he has to go back to hell. So it does suck. This is one of those things that your lead character by the end of the film doesn't really do anything. Like she fucked up. It really is up to Dead Bradley to fix it. Like the other films, Ashley Lawrence sent the demons to hell in the first one and the second one. Um, her and the girl took care of things. Not Pinhead, but, you know, Chenard. <clears throat> this merger of the two, which will fuck up Pinhead. So sadly, the two spirits are going to merge back into one. So the free spirit and the evil spirit. Which I didn't such for Deb Bradley's captain character. Some interesting effects there. <laughs>
Maybe she does something here finally. Pennant, you can move faster than that. I think you're kind of in dire straits here. You don't have to be moving that fucking slow. Let me move like this. Like, come on, you can be a little bit faster. I thought you had to solve it, not stab him with it. I guess in this case, you had to stab it. The morphine effects shots don't really work in today's standards. Practical, practical effects look good, but not the, the morphine effects. Eh. And now she's alone and everyone she knows is dead. <laughs> Even the spirit she knew for a little bit. Doug Briley's is... Ten, well, he was dead, but he's back in hell. That's right. Doesn't she, like, bury it here to his construction site? And then in that shot, it's like... A fucking corporation based on this thing. Which I guess, technically, you see in Hellraiser 4, where... You see that place again, I believe. Well, kind of not really. I mean, it's a different story. I don't think it really connects to this one. It's been a while since I've seen those sequels. Yeah, like the, the floor of the lobby is the yeah right not the floor but there you go fucking hell what does that mean well you don't really know dark to the night hell razor let me rest in peace let me I like this song Hell Razor I put a spill on you. There's actually a remix with this Lemmy and uh, Ozzy Osbourne. And it sounds really good. As uh, Ozzy Osbourne says one line, then Lemmy says another line. And I like this, but I even like that more. So again, go on YouTube, type in Lemmy, like Hellraiser, and then type in Ozzy as well. I'm probably going to listen to that after this. Sounds really good. Oh, Derry Tunacliffe, workshop supervisor. He would go on to direct some of the much later Hellraiser films. Hellraiser. I mean, come on, it ends with a cool song by Lemmy. What's, can't hate the film. Well, you can, but I'm not going to hate the film. Ends with Lemmy. Lemmy or God? Lemmy, no. God. Wrong. Trick to answer. You know, trick question. Lemmy is God. <laughs> what movie is that from? Airheads, which I reviewed on the channel. I did my little Bill, uh, I was going to say Billy Madison marathon. My little Adam Sandler marathon. Love Airheads. Tricky, trick question. Let me is God. But rest in peace, let me. But yeah, overall, I. The flaws of the film, I think the lead girl miscast. I think you could have found better actress. Or honestly, pay Ashley Lawrence a little bit more money and have her be the star. I think it would have mattered in the long run. Change a bit of the dialogue so there's more of a history, of course. I think that would have improved this more. And there's stuff here and there, but overall, I mean, I like the idea, the story of the film. 
following in the veins of Hellraiser 2 where the two spirits have split of Deb Bradley's character. There's actually a bit of spectacle. Well, there's some spectacle in Hell and Hellraiser 2, but here, you know, the streets and the CD and the camera, Cinebites, I like those. Pit Ed having fun in the club sequence. Some fun bits of gore, makeup effects. This score isn't too bad either. I don't think Christopher Young came back, but pretty decent score. Additional music by Christopher Young from Hellraiser. Well, there you go. But yeah, KMF, the bands. You have bands like KMFDM, Armored Saints, Material Issue, 10 Inch Men. Is that a sequel to Nine Inch Nails? Electric Love Hogs, <laughs> House of Lords, <coughs> shit. But yeah, that's my commentary on Hellraiser Three: Hell on Earth. Motorhead, yeah, let me Motorhead. But yeah, I I like the film for what it is. I think it's the last decent Hellraiser film. Some people say four, uh, but I think this is the last decent good Hellraiser flick. It has its flaws, but I, it has enough to recommend. So, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.